um, incrementing the size of the neural network and also has been appearing some new applications uh, with some energy and time constraints and due to this uh, appear the, the need to use simpler, uh, simpler data types and new hardware accelerators to be able to, to execute these models in, in these applications or to execute lar large language models with uh, you need to compress a lot the size. Uh, so the main idea uh, behind quantization is this, use simpler data types. Here we have an example, uh, a, a little bit of a toy example, but you can imagine uh, a weight of a layer, you have the distribution of, of the parameters, and you are representing them in the machine with floating point. So you have a lot of precision around the zero, and you can have a very big value, but at the end, these are the only values that you will be using, and you have a lot of hardware and complexity to be able to, to make operations with floating point. So it's a lot easier for the hardware and the, the, the energy and the size uh, to just simply use uh, an, an integer approximation. So you just make a uniform interval of values, and you map the floating point values to the, to the integer one. Uh, but at the end, you have some error right? because probably you, you can have an exact uh, point in that place, but you have decent approximations. Um, and due to this appears a new parting that is using mixed precision, not only changing the data type of the, the model, but changing the data type in a different way for each layer. So for some layers, you are using less bits to express the weights, and for other layers, you use more bits. So, uh, but this mixed precision assignment uh, brings a, an exponential space of possibilities to, to assign the bits. Uh, and also each potential assignment requires a lot of time to, to evaluate how good it is. So at the end, it seems impossible to find the optimum a bit assignment uh, for a model. So in the literature, you can find uh, some solutions to this, to this problem. Uh, and the one that we are focusing on today is a, a sensitivity-based approach. So you uh, explore the second order information of a model, and with this information, you create a, an integer linear programming problem, you found a solution to that problem, and then uh, you have the bit assignment. All of these based on the second derivatives of the network. Um, so uh, to make a brief summary, we have the accuracy. This is what we are focusing on. Uh, to be able to optimize the accuracy, you we use the last function that approximates in some way the accuracy, but to work directly with the loss function makes unfeasible to find the, the optimal bit assignment. So we are using a second order approximation of the loss function, uh, which is more uh, feasible to work with to find the bit assignment. But even though the, to compute the Hessian needed to this second order approximation seems quite hard, so on the literature, it's actually using an heuristic of the second order approximation, second order Taylor approximation. And they usually found local optimums in this point. The, our main contribution will be to find global optimums here. And also a lot of these works uh, make the assumption that this approximation is uh, sufficiently good to, to work instead of the, the, the true or loss function. They make the assumption that you can work here, and the other assumption that they are heuristic is sufficiently good to, to replace this. So we will work in to check how good is this approximation. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, sorry. So uh, the summary of our main contributions are uh, to evaluate the error that the second order approximation brings, uh, to find the, to be the first work, at least that we know, to find uh, global optimum assignments of the second order Taylor approximation, 
without using heuristics of the Hessian. So we are using the full exact Hessian. Also, we provide uh, and demonstrate that the mixed position uh, can have less degradation than the fixed position. And at the end, we are uh, giving a baseline to compare how good are the, the other heuristics. So maybe the heuristics are faster, but it's uh, worth the trade-off. So, well, as a related work, uh, to find the bit assignments, usually there are uh, the, ser the search-based approaches and the metric base, so they, they are using some heuristics or sensitivities for the layers. We are focusing on here and specifically the sensitivities that are based on the second order information and the, on the Hessian. But we can see that uh, all of these works don't work directly with the Hessian, they work with some heuristics or sensitivities or, for, for example, in how they are using the topic and value of the Hessian of each layer. Uh, and usually all, all these methods uh, neglect the majority of the Hessian, so they are only focusing on the second derivatives from weights in the same layer. They are not looking to cross layer uh, dependencies. But we have the Hessian, an approximating diagonal, more approximations. So the, the main intuition to solve a little bit this problem is to to realize that we don't want all the Hessian, we only focus on certain directions. Those are the directions where you will be quantizing. To illustrate this situation, imagine that you have a data point of two dimensions, and is, is this blue cross? This one? And if you were to, to quantize with only two values, zero or one, you will approximate this point here. If you have a less aggressive quantization, you have two, uh, three potential values for each dimension, you are, approximation, you are approximating the value like this. You can see how this uh, evolves, adding more uh, subdivisions. And at the end, you have this central point and these directions that you really want to focus on. Uh, in this case, uh, we are departing from a two-dimension data point and we have uh, six directions, but in a layer of a neural network, you have a ton of dimensions, but you only want to focus maybe in four or seven potential directions. Those are the directions of quantizing with two bits, three bits, five bits. So we don't need all the coefficients. You, we can compute the derivatives in these directions and then the second uh, derivatives in these directions. So, well, a, a, a little bit of notation. Uh, we have uh, the function of the model. This is the original model, a function that depends on the parameters of each layer. Then we add a, a binary variable uh, that depends on the bit width and the layer. So we have a, variab a variable for each combination of bit width and layer. Zero means that you are not quantizing that layer to that bit width, and one means that you are quantizing that layer to that bit width. So here uh, we compute the, these directions, these arrows. So you take the original weight and you make the difference to the quantized weight of the corresponding layer with that bit width. And then we define a new function that depends on these binary variables. And this is the definition, this taking the, the original function and added, adding that noise to, to each layer. So at, at the end, we want to compute the gradients of this new function uh, with respect to these binary variables. And well, this is the approach that we are using to compute the Hessian. Uh, we are taking profit that the Hessian is symmetric, so we only need to compute half the coefficients. And this is an, an illustrative example that if we have a layer with 10 to the 6 parameters, uh, the gradients are more or less feasible, but if you try to compute the Hessian, then it, it's impossible to fit that in, in a GPU, not only to compute it, but to, to store it. And, but in, in the other hand, we are now depending on the number of layers and bit options. So in the same case, in a, in a network with 100 layers, it's clearly smaller, the, the gradient, but also the Hessian. And well, as an illustrative example, we can compute uh, the Hessian of a resonating team with two GPUs. 
uh, in five minutes, more or less. So it's we, we can compute it. Uh, and also, once we have the Hessian, as a lot of works are doing, um, uh, you want to find the bit assignment. So we formulate a, a mixed integer quadratic uh, programming problem. So, well, this is just we want to minimize the loss. This is the second order Taylor approximation. So this is each coefficient multiplied by the corresponding binary variables. This is the first order term and the and the base loss. And here we are adding some constraints to have some control on the results. So we are telling the, the that we want an assignment with a certain size or certain bit operations at the maximum. Uh, to solve the, these problems, we are working with Morobi, and we found that the, the best approach is to focus on uh, reducing the, the, the bound. And uh, also to, to make this solution faster while providing the solver an initial solution that we found using a greedy uh, algorithm. So it, it, this technique of using first the greedy uh, assignment and then the, the solver uh, really helps to really helps to to improve the time. So well, the experiments here we can see uh, how much images we need to compute the Hessian. So we have two plots because we found that there are a lot of coefficients near to zero. And to compute the relative difference to check if those coefficients have converged, uh, add, 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 those almost zero coefficients add, add a lot of noise to the convergence. So we are using a threshold uh, and we remove these uh, coefficients when it comes to computing the average. So we can see that if we take into account the whole Hessian, it looks like it needs a, a lot of a time to converge. Uh, this is in log scale, as we can see at the end with uh, 50,000 images, it, it clearly has converged. And if you focus on the diagonal, that it happens to be where the most of the information is, the, the bigger values are in the diagonal, we see that it's converging a lot faster. So we are already departing from a, a difference of 6% between iterations. And here's the same with more models, and we can see the same, the same pattern. Well, so let's see the, the Hessian. This is the, the heat map of the Hessian for AlexNet. Uh, we can see in, in the axis, we have the, the, the variables. And you can order those variables in, in two different ways. Uh, this is ordering first by, by layer and then ordering by bits. So, and, and here is the opposite way. In, each index represents uh, one of these binary variables, but are ordered in a different way. In this case, we have uh, first two bits, three bits, four bits, and inside here are the all the all the layers of the network quantized with that uh, bit option. As we can see, there are some blank spots. Those are uh, the coefficients that correspond to quantizing a certain uh, layer with multiple bit options at the same time. So for, for example, uh, quantizing the first layer of the network and the first layer of the network with uh, a different bit option, for example, two and three. So this coefficient doesn't really make sense, so, so we are removing it. And here we can see the diagonal, and we can clearly see the pattern that some layers uh, have different sensitivities. Uh, each line corresponds to, to the second derivatives of quantizing that layer uh, to a certain bit option. So as you can see, when you are moving the, the bit options, you see more or less the same pattern across all the layers. That justifies the idea that some layers have different sensitivities to quantization. And here we have the same plot, but for ResNet 18. And again, we can see the pattern that each layer has some kind of sensitivity uh, across all the bit options. And the same for ResNet 34. So one of our main contributions is to check how the accuracy uh, is. 
a lot of works, just simply use the, the heuristic and go directly to the accuracy of the trained model and skip this in between approximation. So we are the first work to check uh, how good these approximations are. So in the first plot here, uh, we have the second, the, the Taylor approximation uh, for AlexNet, in this case, um, with eight bits. So the zero means that you are in the original weight. And then you need to add noise. The, the quantization is some kind of noise and we are adding that noise progressively. So instead of directly adding all the noise, we move that binary variable to zero to one a, a little bit each time. So it's adding each time more noise. And at the end, in this uh, dotted uh, red line, we have the value that, that matter at the end. So if you quantize with eight bits, this is the real loss that you have. And you can clearly see that our second order Taylor approximation is giving the, the exact value. And if you, if you were to use the first order Taylor approximation, it's completely misleading. Uh, we have the same plot for six bits. And you can see here that the approximation this time is a little bit worse. And the same for four bits, a little bit worse, but more or less okay. And for two bits, it's completely bad in this case. Um, here we have um, more detailed uh, description of how, how is the, the accuracy of the Taylor approximation. This is the, the relative error of the approximation for different assignments. In this case, these assignments are uh, computed as, the, this is the Pareto frontier. So we are using different models and different constraints. And so, but because at the end, we only want to focus in the optimal bit assignments. And in this case, we can see that for the bit assignments that in average has six, seven or, or eight bit widths are quite good. The, the relative error of the prediction is very good, but if you want to be more aggressive, the, the bit assignments, the, the Taylor approximation is giving you predictions that are not that well. So now uh, we want to see the, the bit assignments. So this is, I think, for ResNet 18, and this is the first layer and the last layer. And you, we are constraining the problem to different uh, average bit widths and the solver is giving us these bit assignments and clearly you can see the pattern that for example the first layer tend to be uh, tend to have a, a higher bit width and for example the down sample layers also tend to to have a higher bit width here is an another example okay so now uh, Continuing with the evaluation of the bit assignments, here we have uh, a lot of uh, solutions of the problem. Uh, the blue dots represent the, the loss that you have with the fixed precision assignments, and the orange ones are with mixed precision. As you can see clearly, uh, the, the mixed precision assignments have uh, are, are, are a lot better. So they are always better than the fixed precision assignment. And for example, in cases with, uh, with the five, you are quite, they, they are quite better. And of course, you can see that the, the lines converge at four and eight, because in this case, we are only considering uh, the bits, the bit options between four and eight. So you can have an assignment with an average bit lower than four or eight. Okay. Uh, in this case, as we discussed earlier, the Taylor approximation is not that good uh, with, with low bit widths. So in this case, we went to test it. So we made the, the assignments taking into account the two and three as bit options and removing those bit options. So the model is too optimistic with the two and three bits. So it's using them too early and degradates the model a lot. So in this case, the mixed precision assignments that the second order Taylor approximation is giving us are worse than the fixed precision option. But if you remove those options, you end up with um, much better uh, assignments. 
this is important because uh, in the literature you can find that the papers are using two and three as bit options and using approximations of the the Hessian. So at the end you you can't expect to to be better than the fixed precision if if you want to be that aggressive. And here here we have the same for another model, and this is for mobile net uh, v2. Here we can see that the accuracy is. Uh, you, you have like a shift or a delay in the degradation of the accuracy. So the more you quantize, um, the, the lower the accuracy. But for the mixed precision assignments, you can have, uh, for example, a, a five bit assignment with, with a decent accuracy that then with retraining, you can recover the, the full precision accuracy much easier. And here we have the same for uh, another model. As in this case, we are constraining the bobs, the bit operations, and you can see more or less the same pattern. And here is another model, MobileNet V2. In this case, the mixed precision assignments are quite better than the fixed precision ones. This is because almost all the size of this network is in the last layer. So you can only, you almost can only focus on the last layer and uh, quantize that layer and leave the other layers with high bit widths and you can keep with the good accuracy much longer. So, conclusions. Uh, we are the first work to test the error of the second order Taylor approximation. Uh, we computed the global uh, assignments for the second order Taylor approximation. We proved that this, uh, the computation of the Hessian, at least in the directions that we care, is feasible without heuristics. And also we found that this approach is faster than some heuristic, at least on the, the cases that we tested. Also, we demonstrate that the mixed precision can have less loss degradation than the, the equivalent in fixed precision. Um, also, we showed that there's, there's an issue with the bit options uh, lower than four that a lot of literature seems to be using with the second order information and maybe we need to, to approach these bit options differently. And also we provide a baseline to compare with the other heuristics. So you can see how good they are compared to the, to the exact values. And if it's worth the trade-off between accuracy and, and time. So as future work, this is some, some things that I have been working on, but didn't get to the presentation. Uh, one important thing is a lot of these uh, heuristics only focus on the diagonal of the block diagonal of the Hessian, but there's maybe dependency in between layers. Maybe if you quantize the first layer, you need to be careful with the other ones. Maybe they, there are these cross layer dependency and I've been working on to, to check if the second order information is useful for that. So maybe with the diagonal of the Hessian, you, you, are, you have the same assignments or maybe not. So there's this thing that I'm working on. Also, it's interesting to add the activations, this approach and this approach of directions of binary variables can also be applied to the activations. And then you, you have some issues with the, the gradients, but can be a, a good heuristic. So if you only focus on the weights, is the exact second order Taylor approximation. If you add the activations, you have some issues there, but but can be a good heuristic. Uh, and you have to take in, into account that at least that we found there are no work that gives a mixed precision assignments also for the activations independently. We saw some works that assign, if, if you assign a layer certain bit width, then you assign the same bit width to the activations. They, they, not, they didn't treat these two things like different things. So this is a thing that can be added to this approach. And also, uh, regarding to the problem of the lower bit widths, that the Taylor approximation is not that good, we have an idea that uh, the closer you are to the point you want to predict, the better the approximation is. So for certain layers, you can know that you won't be quantizing them with eight bits or seven bits. 
in the example of mobile net, clearly the last layer, you will be quantizing that layer a lot. So you can move the weights of the layer closer to the quantized values. So when you apply the approximation, you are already closer to the points and the approximation is better. So we are, we are working with, with that. Uh, here's an, an, an illustrative example. You were in that point and you want to go to that direction. Instead of computing the Taylor approximation in that point, you compute the Taylor approximation in this point or in this other point. This is the average of the weights and this is the, the, the center. Also, I, work in, I have been working in the retraining. It's, uh, the, the next step to the beta assignment is retrain the model to try to, to regain all the lost accuracy. And well, here are the references. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Adrian. Now it's time for questions. I don't know if there is any question from people in Zoom. If not, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if. No, I have no questions. Okay. Regarding the. Uh, the enabling of, of very low precision towards these yeah. things. Uh, do, you, do you think or do you have an intuition whether or not it, it would be uh, interesting to do a recursive application of this technique? For example, if the distance between 8 and 2 is very large, uh, you, could, you could, for example, quantize from 8 to 5, which is more than something from 4 or from 8 to 6, and then Retrain and try to do this process again. Would that help, or or is it not? Uh, it any... it will be bringing you closer to the the final uh, weights a little bit more each time, but then it, it can be a useful approach. But also, it's not like a global optimum. It's more similar, like a greedy assignment that you are moving a little bit each time, so you. you it's like an approach between a greedy assignment and a, a global optimum. It, because in each step, you find the, the global optimum step, but then you are doing steps each time. So, yeah, but it, it, it can be a, a useful approach because as we show, the, it's not uh, as good as uh, an heuristic, the, the second derivatives for these low bits. Yeah. And, and the second question is, you saw that first order approximation is bad, second order approximation is good up to a certain point. Have you tried a, a third order approximation? Uh, so uh, I did not test a, a, a third order a full approximation yet. I tested to, to compute the, the diagonal of the, the third derivatives. And what I saw is that at least with the, the third derivative, the, di the diagonal, um, I can notice any difference between the, the second order approximation and the third order approximation. And also, it's um, a lot more uh, computational expensive because the, the computational graph to compute the third derivatives is a lot more complex than the second order ones. I have a question. Um, so you mentioned that this approach is faster than heuristics. Do you have data? Say well, how much the, the, the other, I, I saw certain uh, methods. For example, if I don't remember, uh, I think it's this approach. It's doing a lot of inference uh, to compute his heuristic. And if I don't remember badly, maybe it's 30 minutes for a model like ResNet 18 or ResNet 34. Or, for example, Hauk, I think it's also in the order of 30 minutes. But in our case, we can compute a very decent Hessian in five minutes. So With the same machines. How can you compare the time? Uh... Well, I, I made an implementation of those techniques before. and. What, uh, with the same machines that I'm working now, 
and I can see more or less the, the, the same thing, or at least we are in the same order of magnitude. Intuitively, one can understand that uh, if you have an analytic expression, the faster, no? I yeah. guess that is the reason why. Yeah, so some some approaches try to to make a lot of inferences to to, but in our case we only need to to make the inference one time and then we compute the gradients. That's more or less the, the idea of training in in, in in neural networks to make one inference and in, with one backward propagation you have the all the gradients and the, the other approach will be to, to try to move all the parameters of the network and make an inference for each change and then to try to move but this is super expensive and they are more or less doing that approach for for the bit assignments and we are trying to use the same philosophy as in the training to to make one forward pass and two backward passes to to have this discussion your message is faster, it's basically that you restrict the directions. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I guess the other methods compute the whole direction. Yeah, a, a lot of other methods compute or compute approximations of the block of the Hessian corresponding to, to certain layer, and then they multiply by the direction. And well, then you, you need to, to, to make a lot more of, of computation. Well, this is in, in, in some cases, other heuristics are faster than the full uh, exact, to computing the exact Hessian. Yeah. 